Hello, my name is Sierra Cox and I am a herd share member with Meadow Branch Farm. One of the reasons that I joined a herd share was traceability. I like knowing where my milk is coming from, um, especially with you know everything that's going on in the factory farm world. Um, I was very concerned about the treatment of the animals and you know how they were how they were being cared for, and um, I knew that they were being treated well with Maria. I highly recommend that if you want to join a herd share that you go to the farm, you visit the farm, you see the milking process. It's, um, it's eye-opening the amount of work that goes into running a dairy. I knew it was hard work, but actually being able to sit through the milking and you know, everything that it goes into it and knowing, you know, watching the milk come from the animal to the bottle was was really was a really awesome experience and um, and I really enjoyed meeting both the farmer and the animals that I'm getting the product from. So that was that was really cool. Um, as far as you know, joining the herd share, I you know I think a lot of people are intimidated by the contract. Um, I've had no issues at all. If anything comes up that, you know, I need to change things. I just, you know, being open and communicating with your farmer is really what's important. Um, letting them know, hey, you know, I can't pick up this week or I can't, you know, something's come up and I can't pick up this day. Um, I've found that it's, the farmer is very flexible with you. They work with you. Um, they want to get you your product. It's not, you know, uh, it's it's just been a it's been a really good experience for me. Now, I'm Maria Moles, owner of Meadow Branch Farms LLC in Beaumont, West Virginia. I'm also the founder and president of the West Virginia Raw Dairy Association and editor of the West Virginia Alliance for All Milk page on Facebook. My husband always wanted Holstein, and I I wanted a Jersey from the time I was a teenager. And uh, when we married, he had beef cattle. And uh, then we, we found his Holstein heifer, and uh, she is still with us today. She's 11 years old. And uh, then we've come across a 23-month-old Jersey needing a new home, and he worked out a deal and brought her home for me. And uh, she is also still with us, and she's 12 and a half years old. Uh, both girls are in lactation now, and uh, they're both doing really well. Um, but. Both of these girls were high production cows and we soon found that we had 20 gallons a day to work up, 10 from each girl, and uh, there was nothing we could legally do. So we bought pigs and we raised other people's calves and um, I started looking into the law and uh, seeing what we could do.
difference when um, the farmer has a herd and you as a consumer buy in uh, buy a percentage interest in that herd and then pay a monthly fee for the care and upkeep. It's uh, like a boarding fee, boarding your horse somewhere. Um, you pay the farmer for the care and upkeep of that herd that you own a percentage interest in. It is not a way of buying milk, you're just paying the farmer to take care of the animals. Um, and then in exchange, you are entitled to milk from your herd. So. You got your animals, cows and or goats, know your market. You know, mm -hmm. what kind of demand is there for that type of milk? Um, and then you need to be very familiar with our, our state law, which is West Virginia Code 19-1-7. Um, in that code, it lays out the three main things that you have to follow as a farmer. The first thing being, you need to have your, te your herd tested yearly for TB and brucellosis. And any new animals coming into the herd need to be tested clean for those diseases within the 30 days prior of being added to your herd. Uh, the second thing is you need to have specific wording in your contract. I highly recommend having an attorney draw that up for you. Um, I did and I have never regretted it. it it's been one of the best decisions I've made. Um, and the third thing is you need to file copies of every signed contract with the Agriculture Commissioner's office. Um, and, you know, that's just kind of insurance type thing. Uh, if somebody gets sick, the Commissioner's office can notify others. You know, we can check into it and follow up. So my herd has now grown so that I have a bull, seven cows, and two heifer calves. Um, and I have now uh, 12 alpine does and two bucks. Um, so I'm actually sharing cow and goat milk. Um, there's not the demand for goat milk here that there is for cow, uh, but you know, with allergies in my own home, it's definitely worth it for us to have the, the goat milk as well as the cow. And then I'm finding other people who are finding that you know they do better with the goat milk as well. But again, you know, that's where you need to know your market going into it. I thought there's a higher market than what there is, and there, you know, you know, it's it's trial and error. You're going to learn as you go. Um, a lot of people that contact me and they say, "Well, how do I order?" Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of ordering. You have to actually uh, buy into the share, sign a contract, or become, you know, the legal owner of percentage interest, um, and then you know we go from there. One of the biggest things was uh, the insurance problem. Um, you know, the insurance is not required by our state law. However, uh, I was advised by an attorney and legislator to uh, get liability insurance. So when I went looking for it, I soon found that um, that's very hard to get. And um, when I called my insurance company at the time to ask about buying it, they told me, well, they didn't sell it. And if I didn't have it within 30 days, then they were going to drop me. There's only one company who will insure me in this state. A second lesson was, you know, make sure that you have all your animals tested before you get them if possible. If not, I mean, you could have some surprises afterwards and then have to decide, oh, what do I do with these animals now? Mm -hmm. And I'm not talking about TB and brucellosis so much, although it's good to have those done first. Um, but even like the other things that you can test for, like yonis and, uh, well, with your goats, CAE and CL. Um, you want to make sure that they're free of any, um, any diseases that are transmissible to people. Another big one that I was not prepared for was the, the roller coaster ride. You know, you've got all these customers this month and, oh, you're, you're losing them the next month. Um, I've had people get milk one week and say, okay, this is not for me. I want bought out. I've had, we use more expensive dairy detergents, but it is definitely worth it. Uh, the milk is lasting so much longer and has a better flavor. You're on the schedule. The farmer's going to do their best to have your milk ready on the date and time that you both agree on. If you have any reason you need to change it, let the farmer know as soon as possible. Don't wait till the day of pickup because by that time your milk has already been bottled and is chilled and ready for pickup might be a day that your farmer just doesn't have your milk and you know it it guts us when we can't fill that order um, so just try to be patient with us because you know like my boys and I we're working eight nine hours a day well, my older boys actually going to work off the farm now so it's me and a 16 year old trying to milk all these cows and goats and 
one of the big issues is the insurance. People finding mm -hmm. out, oh, I can't do this and keep my insurance. Um, another thing is testing is a bit expensive. Um, it's worth it. I mean, I highly recommend the testing. I, I wouldn't advise trying to get out of it. Um, because really, if you're drinking that milk yourself, you need to know, you know, it is free. I'm not going to get these diseases. Um, but the testing is expensive. Mm -hmm. I mean, and especially up front, when you're paying for that contract and you're paying for that testing and you're, you're getting everything set up to go. I mean, that's, that's really pricey. But after that, um, work it out. Make sure that you've set your monthly fees at a, a rate that people can afford, but that you're not starving the animals on. Right. Because remember, that fee is going to not only feed the animals, but also pay for that vet bill. And then, you know, emergencies come up, and if you're not able to pay that, it's, it's really going to hurt you. Uh, on my farm, you pay $20 to buy in for one share for a cow share um, and then you pay $26 a month boarding okay um, and for that price you are entitled to one gallon of milk a week per share um, I have had people buy as little as a quarter share and I've had one family but they bought as much as 12 shares price um, okay. to buy in for a goat share is $30 okay. and uh, the monthly fee for a goat share is $43.33 um, that averages out to $10 a gallon if um, I do churn butter and like I said I do the cream uh, but I've also made some soft cheeses and yogurts and such um, and I distribute those to my shareholders only um, like raw milk cheese has to be aged a minimum of 60 days before it can be sold and we are able to sell up to 5,000 pounds of raw milk aged cheese a year. Wow. So that's something I would like to get into, but I just don't have the time. <laughs> right. No, that's, that's a commitment. <laughs> well, I mean, with the hard cheese, I mean, you could make it and set it to the side to age and all that. And then you've got a product later in the winter when other sales might be low or production's low, mm -hmm. whatever you've got something else that you can sell to the public um you know just it, it's a nice extra right because i mean if you're just depending on whole fluid milk going out through your shares you're going to struggle i learned that the hard way so you have to look at doing your value added for your shareholders as well not everybody has the time to make butter nobody not everybody um, knows how or is willing to make cheese uh, so if you can make those value-added things, they will gladly compensate you a fair price. And, I mean, it it could be the difference between dumping five gallons of milk in a day and turning around and, you know, bringing more money in from a shareholder, you know. Mm -hmm. I'm always willing to help however I can. You know, okay. people can just email me at West Virginia Royal Dairy Association email and uh or contact me through facebook and i'll i'll do anything and everything i can to help somebody get going uh the need is great it's more than what just a few people can do mm -hmm. um like i said i had wanted to do just a couple cows and um now you know i've got five cows in milk two more due to freshen um, i've dried two goats off and i've, I've got uh, six still in milk and you know we are moving Oh my, somewhere around 60 gallons of milk and cream and buttermilk and all that out every week. Plus, there's the butter and people are requesting more and more all the time. Wow. So, I mean, this has grown to be much bigger than I ever anticipated. Just, I mean, I've got people coming from Mason County. I've had people coming from uh, Cabell County, Wayne County. Um, I've got them in, shoot, I've got them in Oak Hill. And, That's a drive. Um, I mean, they're coming from all over. Um, as part of why I, I kind of gave myself the nickname West Virginia's Milkmaid <laughs> because I, that's how I felt. I, I was distributing milk into seven or eight counties. And, you know, people were driving a long ways to get to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just 
you know, kind of felt like I was milking for the state. Definitely, but, no. you know. So, you know, you mentioned the West Virginia Milkmaid. So what are some different ways that people could reach out to you if they wanted to, if they had more questions? Uh, on Twitter as West Virginia Milkmaid. Okay. Um, or you could reach me on Facebook through Meadow Branch Farms LLC or the West Virginia Alliance for Raw Milk or the West Virginia Raw Dairy Association Facebook pages. Um, you could also reach me uh, at the Raw Dairy Association's email, which is uh, wvrawdairyassociation at gmail.com. Right. Um, those are the best ways to reach me. And, um, you know, I'll get back to whoever as soon as I can. Mm-hmm. But it, it might not be immediate. <laughs> right. You, you, have a, you have a working farm that you need to deal with. Because besides the, you know, the goats and the cows, what, what other things do you do here at Meadow Branch Farm? Well, we have horses. We have a donkey. We have um, close to 40 chickens. We do sell eggs. Okay. Um, and I don't even know how many ducks we have because all of our poultry is free-ranging. But, again, with the ducks, um, you know, we sell eggs. And we do process and sell the meat on occasion. Uh, as we have it, we also sell beef, and uh, we've got some pigs, and we sell pasture pork, and, well, we've got over 100 animals, and I also have two teenage boys, and going into 11th and 12th grade, it's very fulfilling mm -hmm. when you look into somebody's face, and they tell you just how good that milk is, or one thing that got me was I had a, a teenage boy, he's autistic, and, um, He's got some other challenges, and he he told me, said, Maria, I really like that milk. That's good country milk. Oh, and, awesome. you know, you can't put a price on that. Mm -mm. That came from that boy's heart. And then another day, his little sister, she pulled her beads out from where she was riding in their vehicle, and she comes over, and she says, here, Maria. And she said, uh, they're, they're purple beads or something like that. And I still have them there in my Explorer to remind me why I'm doing this. Because, you know, their sister and father are lactose intolerant. And they cannot tolerate any pasteurized dairy whatsoever. And they could have all the milk. And she could have all the milk she wanted. Her dad could too from this farm. And um, so just knowing that there was a young girl getting what she needed. And even her siblings were appreciative. You know, you, you can't put a price on that. Um, and then I, I've had other people tell me, you know, I was, I was struggling. I, I had this going on or that going on, and I got your milk, and that, that went away. Mm -hmm. So I have no idea what happened, what changed, but they could tell a difference. And I, I've had some others say, well, you know, I don't need much. We just don't really use milk at our house, so I just want to get a gallon. And, I mean, this happened in December. And next thing I know, she's like, oh, my goodness, Maria. She said, I don't know what's in that milk. She says, I crave milk now. And she said, you know, I don't have enough to do anything with it. I need to buy another share. And so she's up to getting uh, two shares of milk and a quarter share of cream oh. every week. And um, she tells me that, you know, sometimes she just needs another gallon. Mm -hmm. oh my <laughs> because goodness. she's making cheese or something else right. and she told a co-worker about me and uh, that lady contacted me she said well I'm, I'm a widow I don't use much at all so I just want a quarter share she got her first delivery on Tuesday on Friday she was asking to bump to half a gallon <laughs> and now she's asking to bump to a gallon <laughs> mm -hmm. yes. and it's because she's discovered how to make her own cheese and yogurt oh. and stuff like that and she still uh, wants me to make butter for her but still, you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, it, it goes, it starts with one person. And um, I've got a nurse that's getting goat milk from me. And the babysitter come over and saw that. And it's like, hey, I want some of that. Where do you get your milk? And so the nurse told the babysitter, now I've got both of them on my shares list. And then um, I had a lady, she, she got milk for a while and cream. And then she's like, well, Maria, I'm going to start my own herd share. And so I'm leaving. I said, okay. And um, she had a herd of goats, and things didn't go as well with her goats as what she anticipated. And she said, Marie, can I come back? I said, well, absolutely. She's now getting four gallons every week. Wow. 
and she's churning her own butter and I don't know what all she's doing with all that milk but she's enjoyed it so much that she told her sister this lady's in Boone County and she drives to Charleston every week to get her milk so she enjoyed it so much she told her sister in Oak Hill who is now driving to Charleston to get milk every week milk and eggs both wow. of them are getting eggs as well as milk oh, wow. so you know it's just people are getting the word of it and they're telling somebody else telling somebody else um, I had another lady she gets milk every Tuesday and she was telling a, a lady in the homeschool group about me and I got her as a customer and I mean it just word of mouth it builds and I've had to advertise some but most of what I have and the people came word of mouth mm -hmm. and you know they come they go but you know it's it's always uh, interesting learning their different ways um, answering their questions you know I even have to be considered of different religions mm -hmm. which I had never considered before you know well it's their religious holiday they have to fast and so that limits their intake that week or somebody's got a question okay what is in the in the milk what's in the feed that you give them you know to produce the milk and we have to make sure that that is in line with their dietary restrictions or um, I even have one lady say, well, okay, does, do you use your milking equipment for anything else, like butchering or whatever? And no, this is dedicated only. And, you know, she's learning the different ideas, that, you know, and questions and different misconceptions. It's helped me a lot as a farmer, just, you know, hearing their thought process mm -hmm. and then having to go find answers for them if I didn't already know it and then come back to answer their questions. It's helped me grow a lot. Definitely. And I guess, do you have any recommendations if somebody is interested? Because, you know, you've mentioned a lot of people, the benefits of raw milk. Um, is there a resource that you would recommend for someone to look into to see if raw milk might benefit them? You can look online. There's all kinds of information online, different places about the benefits. Uh, and, you know people making different claims as to what it can help and what it can hurt. Mm -hmm. All I can do is I can say based on personal experience what has worked for us. Um, so <laughs> Chloe, that's enough. But I'm really excited. <laughs> that's enough. Hey. Chloe, go lay down. Am I getting them sassy? <laughs> <laughs> um but all we can do is go by personal experience. So talk right. to your farmer. Mm -hmm. They're going to know, you know, they're going to hear the stories from other people. They're going to know what it did for them. Mm -hmm. so if the farmer's not drinking their own milk, you got a problem. So know what that farmer's experience is with the milk. My husband and I are both allergic to cow's milk. But our boys drink the cow's milk. Um, mm -hmm. and my husband and I drink the goat's milk or I don't drink it anymore but I, I haven't been able to drink milk since I was 12 or so because of my reaction to it so even with goat milk I don't drink it but I use it on cereal I like making cheese, mm -hmm. yogurt and other stuff so um, you know it's opened things up again for me to have dairy um, so you know talk to your farmer <laughs> Chloe that's enough I didn't ask you. She wanted to put her two cents in too. <laughs> um, but yeah, just personal experience. Okay. Um, I mean, you can read books on it. There's all kinds of. <laughs> I just have to get the last word in. <laughs> it's farm. There's all kinds of information out there. Just be careful, weed through it, and always talk to somebody who's done it. Mm -hmm. Because one person's experience is not the same as another's. And what you read online might not be true. I know I've seen some really scary information online. Um, and please do not go by what's on Pinterest. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I did. I had a lady following recipes on Pinterest set her milk out for days and wondered why it didn't turn into whatever product she thought it was supposed to and I said oh no as your farmer please I beg you dump that milk out and next time you want to make a product use a culture and if you need help finding one I'll help you. yes so 
anyhow oh uh, <laughs> be careful what source you depend on mm -hmm. there are good ones out there but weed through everything carefully definitely I think that's huge um, mm -hmm. I guess one more thing to kind of because you so you have a separate milking room and area that you use to you know milk the cows and then a separate commercial refrigerator that you right. store the milk in right is that a requirement for someone or it's not a requirement but it's a very good idea um in fact i have plans to upgrade my facilities uh we're wanting to add windows we're going to uh, run more water and electricity so that um, i can separate you know, and have a dedicated milking parlor only, have another room where, you know, we wash up and, you know, store the milk and all that. And if I can get bulk tanks, I'm really looking into getting at least one bulk tank to store until my milk faster. And then have another room for bottling and processing. Just, you know, to increase the cleanliness. You know, I mean, I can keep my milk clean as it is, but it's more of a struggle, you know. So if I could uh, separate it out, I, I highly recommend if you could just separate it out and have this room for this, this room for this, you know, just to keep it clean and then always, you know, keep your hands clean, wear gloves. I mean, I, I didn't like that idea at first, but when I consulted um, an environmental health inspector, uh, he, he said, you really should be wearing gloves because raw milk is a ready to eat food. And I'm like, look, I'm not sure I could feel the udder, what I need in the udder, and I actually can and I, I found that I prefer to wear the gloves. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, it, it's great for when you're bottling. Um, make sure your hair is covered or put up. Mm -hmm. um, ideally, you would have it covered even if it is put up. I've not found anything to stay in place and I end up fooling with my hair with gloved hands. So, you know, often I, I just don't cover my hair. I make sure it's pinned up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, ponytail or whatever is not good enough. You need it like wound up braided up otherwise you could end up with hair in your milk or in your equipment and that's just not okay so you know pay attention make sure that you're being as clean as possible in whatever facilities you have and then always look to see how you can better yourself and you know as you do that i think you'll find you have a better product and you'll be happier and your customers will be too mm -hmm, definitely